Hello everybody. Hello YouTube. Hello art history enthusiasts and visual culture aficionados. It's me again, Miss M, and I'm back with yet another video. What in the world am I going to be talking about today? Well, as I said, I had the intention of doing a couple of different kinds of videos. Uh, I've done a couple of them lately. I've done my Hunter video lately. Um, my continuation of the Scooby-Doo and Wax Root video where I talk about the trompe l'oeil. Um, my Monsters and Aesthetics video. I've been busy. I've been busy. Uh, and before that I did Pool and Marinella, What is Art? And before that I did Understanding the Exorcist, What the Hell is Going On? Uh, and this video was the part two for my, what's turning into my Exorcist series. I didn't think this would happen. I really didn't. But there's a bunch of stuff in that movie that warrants discussion. And what I want to discuss today is a part of the movie, or an aspect, not a part, an aspect of the movie that I don't think is very often discussed, or maybe not at all. I'm not sure. Um, let me just, you know, as, as, as I always start out, like I said, I always say this, I feel I have to say, it. I don't know why I feel I have to say, it, but I do. And I say, it. I start off at my homepage, just so you know, you're in the right place. And you are, here you are in the right place, uh, at the object of art. And let me go to the Exorcist Wikipedia page. Now, Again, this movie is absolutely fascinating. It is billed and marketed and promoted to this day as the scariest movie ever. Is that true? I don't know. I just don't know. I mean, yeah, there were a couple of jump scares in there, but it wasn't like something that... I, was, I, I didn't lose sleep. I wasn't so scared that I just, you know, I did, I didn't, I did, I wanted to sleep with the lights on or anything, but there you go. Um, again, if you have not seen any of my other videos or if you've never heard of the exorcist, there's a possibility. Um, here's the Wikipedia page where you can read about the movie and I suggest go watch the movie because it didn't scare me. So if you're worried about being scared, don't. In my opinion, don't worry about being scared. But once again, that's just me. That's just me. Um, it's about this little girl. She gets possessed by an entity. I won't call it a demon because, I mean, it is. It is. It is kind of a demon, but it isn't in the in the world of Mesopotamian archaeology. Uh, not archaeology. Sorry, mythology, folklore, whatever. It's a monster. It's a, it's a monster, and it can do damage, but also at the same time, it protects mothers and children. So you got to wonder why it's there in this movie, possessing little Regan, who's about 11 or 12 years old in the movie, and her mother, who's effectively a single mother. Uh, Regan's mother and father have divorced. The father is in Rome, of all places. What's What else is in the Rome? The Vatican. Okay, so this is a movie that it's a religious movie. Okay. All right. Whether you know it or not, whether you like it or not, if you think it's just a scary movie that's supposed to be scoop, spooky and creepy and uh, whatever, a horror movie, okay, cool. But that's the thing. A lot of people, you know, maybe don't watch horror movies because they're, they're meant to be scary. They're not, they're not comedies. They're not romance movies. They're not, no, they're, horror movies horror is horror and a lot of people won't watch a horror movie because of they're afraid of what they might see they're afraid it's going to make them like i said want to sleep with the lights on but the thing about horror and that whole genre of film is that you can say things in a horror movie that you just can't say in a comedy or you cannot say in a romance movie or an adventure movie or you know, any other kind of movie. Horror is its own thing, and it it's specific. And the potential 
for a horror movie to be a vehicle, or a vessel, rather, um, to carry all kinds of complicated messages and transmit them to the viewer, to communicate them to the viewer, it's vast. The, the, the potential of that is vast. And there are some people who have done amazing jobs, like the people who did The Exorcist. They did an amazing job. The director, William Friedkin, the writer, William Peter Blatty, um, and the, the actors did an amazing job, all of them. Um, so I have nothing bad to say about this movie. The movie is amazing. It's just, I don't know why everybody's been so scared all these years. Somebody needs to explain that to me. But never mind, that's not why I'm here today. Today, like I said, this is a religious movie, and I want to talk about that aspect. It's a religious movie, not in the predictable way. When I say a religious movie, you probably think, oh, it's a movie, you know, if it's a religious movie, it's about Catholicism. Yeah. Yeah. There's that. But there's also another religion that we're dealing with in this movie that isn't ever, that I can remember, really addressed, which is the religion that was followed by the people who were alive at the time during the, during the time of ancient Mesopotamia, Sumer, Akkad, and so on and so forth, Babylon. Okay, that's all Mesopotamia. And I did, let me go back to my page, um, <laughs> if you want, you can look at my other videos where I, I think, where is it? Oof, I wish I was a little more organized. Oh, here it is. There we are. Introduction to Ancient Mesopotamian Art. Go ahead, look at that. I might put it in as one of my um, end screen links. And then this one, Ancient Mesopotamia Series Part 1. I have yet to do a part two, but I will. I will eventually. This one, part one, Inanna, the Varka vase, and the mask of Varka. Okay, so I talked about the religious aspect of Mesopotamian art, which is extremely important to understanding art from those cultures, from that time period, from that location geographically. And they don't talk about that in this movie. They show you Pazuzu, who is a Mesopotamian deity. But they don't tell you nothing about him. They show him, and you know, because of the movie and the context in which Pazuzu is presented to you, the viewer, you think Pazuzu is just an all-around no-goodnik. If you realize that you're dealing with Pazuzu to begin with. Because the nature of possession, people think that they're dealing with the devil or with a demon or something like that. Or in, and when they use those words, demon, devil, they mean it in this Christian sense of, of those words, that connotation. And no, that's not what we're dealing with. Not with regard to Pazuzu. So, and the movie doesn't really elaborate on that, which I find fascinating. Another thing, and I did cover, I think I covered that in my, um, this one, my part two. My what the hell is going on part two. Okay, here's part three, and here's what I want to discuss today. Today, this evening, whatever, whenever you're watching this. All right, I'm back. Oh, every single, every single time. When I try to make one of these videos about this movie, some shit happens. There, I finally cussed on this channel. But my God, every single time, well, maybe not. The first one, it was okay. Second one, I think you heard me scream if you watched it. This time, there's some, there's some, there's some, I already cussed. I might as well do it again. There's some shit going on outside in, on the street. There's a, oh. There's a, there's a fire truck. A fireman have showed up in the ambulance for the neighbors. And I don't know what's going on. And it ain't none of my business. But I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Anyway. Where was I? Now I gotta... I, I, I oof, lose my train of thought. What was I talking about? Oh, yes. Religion, mythology. Yes. And they don't really address Pazuzu. Okay. So Pazuzu, if you're the one causing these disturbances... Please know that I have nothing against you. I'm actually a fan. 
So, you know, please let me get through this video all the way through with no more interruptions. My go And I waited for, you know, when's the last time I made an Exorcist video? Apparently two weeks ago. Okay. All right. So here we are again. You know. And yeah, so the, the Catholic or the Christian or the Judeo-Christian aspect of religion is very prominent in this movie. But the Mesopotamian one is there. Pazuzu is there, but it's just not addressed, which I find mind-boggling. But, um, you know, like I said, check out my Mesopotamia videos if you're interested in learning more or, you know, a gateway to more knowledge about Mesopotamian religion, mythology, folklore, and what have you. I'm adjusting in my chair. Excuse me. So, you know, so here we are at the Wikipedia page. Read through this. Um, and watch the movie. I highly suggest it. But what I really want to talk about today, I've spent about 11 minutes talking about just kind of setting, setting this up, the religious aspect, the religious aspect. Another aspect that isn't really addressed is, well, let me show you rather than tell you. This is the author. This is the Wikipedia article page, whatever you want to call it, for the author of the novel, The Exorcist, the, the book that all of this stuff is based on. The gentleman's name was William Peter Blatty. He lived to the ripe old age of 89. He had some, own, he had some of his own personal tragedies in life, I think. I, I won't talk about that here because I don't want to depress anybody. But he was obviously a very good writer, and his, his writing, his of of this novel and the subject matter that it covers and everything kicked off like a huge phenomenon in the world of literature cinema and etc so you know how many possessions how many exorcisms have happened as a result of this movie being made i just wonder i just wonder you know like he started one heck of a trend. All those ghost hunter shows on TV, all those, um, all, all the stuff, all the stuff, all the paranormal stuff on TV that you've seen and all the spooky stuff that they crops up on uh, in the media around Halloween time. We can, very, for a lot of that, we can, we can either thank or blame William Peter Blatty. Okay. Now the thing about William Peter Blatty that he, it, it, he was very open to talk about it, I think, from what little I've read. I haven't read a lot. But he was educated by Jesuits. So the movie, right, the priests in the movie, Father, where's the cast? Ugh, okay, yes. Um, Father Lancaster Marin and Father Damien Karras and I think all of the other ones here and all any and all of the characters who are priests and i think there were actually some priests in the movie who actually were actors in the movie all jesuits okay all right and that's never really addressed i mean they mention they they don't even really mention it no they don't i mean georgetown university Father Thomas, uh, Birmingham is the president of Georgetown University in the film. Georgetown University is a Jesuit school. Okay, William Peter Blatty went to Georgetown University, and you've, if you look at his, um, click on down here to his early life, and it it addresses here he, he attended Brooklyn Preparatory. I think it's in New York. Yes. A Jesuit school. And he was the valedictorian in 1946. He later attended Georgetown University, a Jesuit school, on a scholarship where he earned his bachelor's degree in English in 1950. Okay. And what does he say about his experience there? Those years at Georgetown were probably the best years of my life, Vladdy said in 2015. Until then, I'd never had a home. While studying for his... 
master's degree at George Washington. You know, I don't, is this a Jesuit school too? I doubt it, but you know, I should look into that. But so he's not just, je excuse me, excuse me. I, I get ahead of myself and then I get tongue tied. He, he didn't go to just one Jesuit school. No, 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 no. He went to a Jesuit high school and he got his bachelor's degree in English at Georgetown. And this is like an old and extremely respected institution in Washington, D.C. Georgetown is not a separate sort of, from what I, my understanding, Georgetown is not a separate town or a separate city. No, Georgetown is like a district or a neighborhood in Washington, D.C., the nation's capital. The capital of the United States is Washington, D.C. That's where Georgetown is and Georgetown University. All right, and it is a Jesuit school, okay? Um, oh, dear. Oh, good heavens. Here's some more. Career. Look at this. In the late 1950s, Blatty worked as the public relations director at Loyola University. Of That's another Jesuit school. Okay. I have researched this subject, y'all. Just ask me in the comments about who is and who ain't educated at, at Jesuit schools. I might talk about that a little later in this video, but I don't want to, I don't want that to distract from what I'm trying to accomplish here at the moment. There's a lot of very prominent people, both living and dead, in the United States who were educated at Jesuit schools. And probably even more than I have been able to f trace because when you look at a person's Wikipedia profile or their, their article, if you're, fa if it's a famous person and they have a Wikipedia article, it'll list their name and their birth date. And if they're dead, their death date, what they did for a living. And sometimes it'll list what, where they went to school. In the case of some celebrities or famous people, like some of them just didn't go to school or they dropped out or whatever. But if it does list where they went to school, it'll usually tell you where they went to college. Okay? Especially if it's a lawyer or a judge or a politician or something like that where people value education in those fields or a scientist or, you know, somebody like that. But if it's like a rock star, they rarely mention that person's education or an actor or, or somebody in the arts, right? Uh, or entertainment rather. Um, so you look at the early life and that's usually where they talk about the person's education. And like I said, if they do talk about a person's education, they usually limit it to their college education. They sometimes, from what I've See, they rarely mention where they went to high school and even more rarely, basically almost never mention where they went to elementary school or whatever you want to call it, elementary grammar school or junior high school, middle school. They never talk about that. So maybe there are a lot more people, famous people, prominent people who were educated in Jesuit schools as very, you know, young children that we don't know about. Yeah, I said that. <clears throat> Why am I saying that? Well, because we're talking about this movie, and it's just like chock full of Jesuits. <laughs> it's bursting at the seams with Je <laughs> Jesuits. First of all, the author of, of the novel that started this whole thing off, the Exorcist franchise and all of the other stuff. And couple of characters well what did i say a couple of ca all the priests and if you see a priest in this movie they're a jesuit priest because it's to do with georgetown father Marin, played by this dude max von sydney and they made him look very old for this role he was born in 1929 so this thing was made in the early 1970s so he was what in his 40s when he made this movie so they caked on the makeup to make him look extra old um so father Marin is a jesuit okay um and also father damien Karras, played by this guy jason miller D father Karras is also a jesuit and not only is father Karras a jesuit but jason miller where is it yeah 
University of Scranton, which, where is it? Here it is. His family moved to Scranton. I think that's where Joe Biden is from, if I'm not mistaken. I could be mistaken. Correct me if I'm wrong. But his Jason Miller's family moved to Scranton in 1941, where Miller was educated at St. Patrick's High School and the Jesuit-run University of Scranton. Hello. Where he received a degree in English and philosophy. He then attended Catholic University of America in Washington, D.C. I don't know if they're affiliated with the Jesuits. They might be, but I don't want to, I don't know, I, I don't want to make a mistake here. But, so he went to a Jesuit-run university, just like the author, William Peter Blatty, and all of the priest characters in the movie. I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. Get ready. Don't you find that suspicious? Don't you find that suspicious? Don't you find that suspicious? I know I do. I find it interesting. I find maybe not, yeah, suspicious a little, yeah. G good measure of suspicion, and uh, but it definitely interesting. That's a hell of a coincidence. That the author, and the author of this book that turned into a movie, was educated by Jesuits, both his, his high school and his college education. Okay. And then he worked at one after, Loyola. Like I said, you wouldn't believe <clears throat> how many folks, prominent folks, famous folks, went to Jesuit schools. Now, I don't know if that means anything. Oh, I no, I can't say that. I can't, I cannot say that. No, I can't say whether or not it means anything, but it's, it's a thing, as, as the young people say. It's a thing. It's a fact. It's a, it's an undeniable fact. And I could, off the top of my head, and I might do that near the end of this video, I could, I'm not going to do any more links. I've already got way too many up here, but I could off the top of my head list for you all of the people, well not all of the people, but a lot of the people that I have learned were educated in Jesuit schools. Famous people, prominent people, important people in the United States and in the world, not just the United States, you know. So for the purpose of this video, I decided to look a little further. All right, here's the Wikipedia page for what father, where is he? Damien Karras, there he is, played by Jason Miller. Um, he calls it the society in the movie. That's the, that's the term he uses, the society. He doesn't call it the Jesuits. They, I don't think they call themselves that. They call themselves what the title is here, the Society of Jesus. Um, the Society of Jesus is a Roman Catholic church religious order whose members are called Jesuits, soldiers of Christ, and foot soldiers of the Pope, because the founder, St. Ignatius of Loyola, hence the name of Loyola University in Los Angeles, uh, St. Ignatius of Loyola was a knight before becoming a priest. Loyola was Spanish, <clears throat> if I remember correctly. Jesuits are the largest male religious order of the Roman Catholic Church with 19,216 members, uh, 13,491 priests, 3,049 scholastic students, and 1,810 brothers and 866 novices. The Society of Jesus is consecrated under the patronage of the Madonna della Strada. It is led by a superior general, currently Arturo Sosa. The headquarters of the society, is General Curia, is in Rome. Within the Catholic Church, there has been a sometimes tense relationship between Jesuits and the Vatican. This is due to questioning the official church teaching and papal directives, etc., etc., and so on. I'm not going to get into, you know, uh, controversial stuff in this video, but... However, as of 2013, the current Pope, Pope Francis, 
is a Jesuit himself. So that should answer your question if you wondered whether or not he's still a Jesuit after becoming the Pope. Yep. 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 All right, so I urge you to read this if you're interested. Read what? They have nothing here. Oh, my. Oh, my. Well, okay, I guess that I guess that's it then, huh? I did not expect that. Because the stuff that I've read about it, especially when I read on Wikipedia, I've never really gone, hmm. I've used, I, I've, I've read about uh, Ignatius Loyola's biography here on Wikipedia and the other founding members of the Society of Jesus. But I didn't know. I don't know what's going on here. I could have sworn this thing was longer before. You know what? <clears throat> Let's keep it moving because I'm freaked out again. Um, yeah, Ignatius. I'm, we're not going to talk about him today, but wow. Wow, they just, wow. But I do want you to take a look at this. This is the Christogram of the society. I guess I'll call it that. Um, IHS. If you remember in this video, now, um, am I getting ahead of myself? No. But look at this. It's it's a circle, okay, an orb, whatever you want to call it. And there's what look like sun rays encircling the circle. And then there's the letters IHS with a cross stabbed through the H. But the cross seems to be made of nails. And there are three nails down here. Okay? Remember, if you've been with me, if you've been following me, um, when I did my video here, Art Talk, What in Jesus' Name, when I, and I might put that on my end screen too, um, but never mind, uh, and I talked about one of the Kendall figures that Poole and Marinella put together of the crucified Jesus. Well, they only used three nails and there they are again the three nails and this cross seems to be made out of one two and three nails there's only three nail heads here and if you want a better view of this christogram monogram whatever you want to call it no it's a monogram not a christogram i'm sorry um here it is okay and this thing this monogram for the society of jesus is that it has its own Wikipedia page. Okay, the, the IHS is a Christogram. This, but the, like this emblem or symbol is called a monogram. Okay, um, and it's, it explains what these letters mean. The different um, possible interpretations. This is the one I'm I'm sort of leaning towards. In hoc signo, by this sign, in, in hoc signo vinces, by this sign you shall conquer. That if you if you even took one history class in high school for world history, they always seem to mention the Emperor Constantine and his conversion to Christianity. He was urged to do that by his mother Helena. Um, I think that was her name. And he had his famous dream where he was shown a sign and that's you know that's what he was told in his dream by this sign or in this sign you shall conquer but it's usually interpreted as being the Cairo which I won't get into in this video because it would just confuse you more but this is also so the Cairo or the Cairo iota which are Greek letters Cairo iota and they're the first three letters of the word Christ in Greek um, and that's where, when you see that Cairo, it looks, um, like I said, let me not get into that now. But there's this one, IHS. Where is it from? Well, it's been around for a while, IHS. And 
they basically can't figure out for sure whether or not it was originally IHS or IHC. And whether or not the S is like um, what they call here a lunated sigma. A sigma doesn't look very much like an S. Okay, this is a sigma, this, this little thing here. This is a sigma. I've just highlighted it in blue. It looks like a very angular letter E, capital letter E. That doesn't look like an S to me, or a C. But I just see, this is why I'm extremely skeptical about things. Whether or not I should be, I don't know. However, in hoc signo, by this sign you shall conquer. And it tells you right here that IHS, which is um, ad adopted by the Jesuits as its fixed emblem, IHC, uh, in the 17th century. And these are the Latin interpretations of the abbreviation IHS. Okay. It's on their monogram. They use that Christogram on their monogram. And it is on the coat of arms of Pope Francis. Right there. And I did look up what this meant, but I forgot because I don't know Latin and I'm not going to, I'm not going to memorize it. So there's that, but it's, it's all here. The Christogram IHS, the three nail cross, and then to kind of emphasize it, the three nails in black at underneath the Christogram. And then his coat of arms has these keys. Are these the keys to heaven? Because um, the Pope is considered the servant of the servant of God, which I think that would be St. Peter. St. Peter was the first Pope. But, and then, oh, th there, I'm going to get, yes, I'm going to get into some conspiracy theory ter territory in this video, right? Um, gosh. There's a lot going on. There's a lot going on with with all of this. Okay, and I talked about, like I said, triclavianism. There, I finally pronounced it correctly when it's right in front of my face. Uh, is the belief that three nails were used to crucify Jesus. The exact number of the holy nails has been a matter of theological debate for centuries. The general modern understanding in the Catholic Church is that Christ was crucified with four nails. But three are sometimes depicted as a symbolic reference reference to the Holy Trinity. Uh-huh. Really? Okay. And here we are. I don't know who did this. Painting. Let me click on it. It doesn't even say. But this is obviously a Renaissance depiction. Early Renaissance. Probably Northern Renaissance. Based on, you know, um, my study of this subject. Now... Representation in art. I'm looking, I've read this page before. I have read this page before. And I remember distinctly. Oh no, they didn't. Oh no, you guys are with me here. In real time, the nerve, the nerve, I've read this before. And when they talk about this, and they talk about like what groups believed in this three nail thing, triclavianism. Okay, there we are, Cathars, okay. Uh, Albigensis. Okay, so the Cathars were a group of people who followed this, and the Waldensians. Now, I'm not so much concerned with the Waldensians, but I am concerned with the Cathars. They don't even know whether or not these people were an actual group. Uh, this is part of a series on Gnosticism, and if you want to learn more about Gnosticism, I suggest you click on this link. It's very interesting. Very interesting. But the Cathars, who basically were either they died out or they were basically eradicated, um, they're, they're 
a group that believed in this three nail thing and this is important because it's the gnostic seems to be the people or the group who believed in this three nail thing for the crucifixion and this seems like an as you as it said here it's a, been a matter of theological debate for centuries that they don't debate things that aren't important in, in some way shape or form no they're not going to do that they're not going to spend time wait on on issues that don't affect something at least indirectly or maybe not so indirectly we just don't know how because we're not privy to their stuff that they're doing but anyway so the cathars i want i'm going to leave all these links for you to explore in your own time if that's what you want to do all right the cathars were intense they were weird and there's speculation as to whether or not they ever really even existed or they're just um, a fictional group of people i don't know also i want to to look at the if you ha again if you feel compelled to uh the article about the carthusians why well because where is the society of jesus okay um the, i i could have sworn i could have sworn i could have sworn that this article used to be longer but i guess i was wrong i guess i was wrong my stars anyway one of the founders of the society of jesus i think peter faber's um uncles maybe one or two of his uncles i'm not sure was a carthusian and i showed a picture of a carthusian monk in my video from here this one, how to lie and make lots of money doing it. When I talked about um, the trompe l'oeil, the trick of the eye, and there was, in the Wikipedia page about trompe l'oeil, there was a, as an example, they showed a painting of a Carthusian monk with a fly, a, a fly that's indistinguishable from a real one painted onto the edge of the canvas depicting the Carthusian monk. So if one if one or two of the relatives of one of the founders of the order of of the Society of Jesus was a Carthusian, that is significant. That warrants study. And again, I I didn't feel compelled to sort of bring up that um movie, but there is a documentary about the the Chartreuse monks and that's that's their name in french and how they live it's a it's an extremely ascetic kind of lifestyle or a monastic order um so it's worth looking into and then if if i don't know if it had an influence on the jesuits maybe it had an influence on peter faber one of the founders also the franciscans okay i want you to um Think about them. Okay. A cross, Christ's arm, and St. Francis's arm, a universal symbol of uh, Franciscans. And notice the stigmata. Oh, boy. There's a lot to go through here. But Francis of Assisi is the founder of the Franciscan order. And this predates the, found, the foundation of the society. Okay. Um, why do I, why do I bring that up? Well, where is it? Oh, yes. Yeah. Pope Francis. That's why he's named Pope Francis. He took his name, his Pope name, from Francis of Assisi. Now, I have said a whole bunch of stuff in this video. Did I say anything? Did I really say anything? I don't know. I don't know. But I have brought to you if you didn't realize it already i've brought to your attention the extensive presence of the jesuits in this movie the exorcist from the author to one of the actors and one one of the actors who's not a priest and including all those actors that where's the cast all those actors that are priests 
the fact that it takes place in Georgetown, which is a neighborhood in Washington, D.C., and it prominently features the uh, university, Georgetown University, and so on and so forth. Both of the characters, both um, Father Lancaster Marin and Father Damien Karras, are Jesuits. S.J., Society of Jesus. All right. <laughs> the detective, and I've already talked about this in other videos, the detective uh, who's investigating the death of, or murder, of Burke Dennings in the movie is named William. Uh, the author is named William. And the director is named William. Are those coincidences? I don't know. Maybe I've, maybe I've finally lost my mind. But like I said, um, I don't think this is an accident. Obviously, the Jesuit or the Society of Jesus, that order and the education there, had a very profound effect on the author, William Peter Blatty. Uh, he wanted to showcase it in this novel of his, where he's exploring whatever it is that he's exploring as the subject matter or uh, you know, wh whatever kind of jour journey he's taking as an author and he wants to take his reader on that journey and then, in turn, the viewer of this movie. And that journey involves the Jesuits, the Society of Jesus, and Pazuzu. Don't forget Pazuzu. And possession. And the idea of the supernatural or the paranormal. And the idea of otherworldly things having influence on the lives of living, breathing people. Okay, and again, that's why I made this, because I just wanted to draw this to your attention and give you a little bit of non-controversial, non-scandalous, non-gossipy information about this organization. Okay. And like I said, near the, no, no, yeah, nearer to the beginning of this video, there's a lot of famous people, both living and dead, who were educated in Jesuit schools. Okay? I'm going to go back to my homepage, because I've done a video, several, actually. I'm up to number seven on one of them, Hunter Biden. Went to Georgetown University. I think his sister as well, uh, Joe and Jill Biden's daughter, Ashley, she also either went to Georgetown or she was associated with that school in some way. Yep. Oh, I could go on. I might. I just might. Uh, another person who was educated at a Jesuit school, Donald Trump. Another uh, member of the Trump family who was educated at a Jesuit school, Ivanka Trump, Eric Trump, Ivana Trump, Melania Trump, Tiffany Trump. <laughs> yep. Another individual who was uh, educated at a Jesuit school. This one you might find interesting. Bill Murray. Yeah. Leonard Nimoy. Mm-hmm. Uh, Donald Rumsfeld. <laughs> Clarence Thomas. Brett Kavanaugh. Um, let's see who else I can remember. Uh, both Nancy Pelosi's husband and son, Paul Sr. and Paul Jr., uh, one of the Gettys. Oh, uh, Kimberly Guilfoyle. Who else? Who else? Um, Klaus Schwab. Uh, Lyndon Baines Johnson. Jackie Bouvier Kennedy Onassis. Who else? Who else? Who else? Oh, Duff McKagan. <laughs> It's going to get more interesting. If, if, if I could remember more people. Uh, oh, Karl Marx. Nikola Tesla. 
It's coming back to me. I mean, you know, you can't remember all of these names. No, you can't. Oh, 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 oh. Um, Jerry Brown, former governor of California. Uh, Gavin Newsom also. And by the way, Kimberly Guilfoyle was his, is his ex-wife. So both, both of them were educated at Jesuit schools. Um, I'm trying to remember more names. I'm trying, I mean, you know, this is a several, several generals. Okay. I can't remember off the top of my head exactly which ones, but you know, a couple of generals. Um, I think another Supreme Court Justice, Neil Gorish, uh, the late Supreme Court Justice Antonin Scalia, he was also educated by Jesuits. Um, Fidel Castro. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure his brother Raul. Um, who else? Who else? Who else? Justin Trudeau. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like I said, I could keep going. I could keep going. Uh, Charles de Gaulle and the current, uh, uh, is he a president or prime? No, I think he's the president of France, uh, Emmanuel Macron. Oof. Like I said, I could keep going for a while. And I'm sure there are many that I just don't know about. Duff McKagan was the one that really just threw me. And Leonard Nimoy. And Bill Murray. Um, and then when I found out <laughs> that Hunter Biden was <laughs> went to Georgetown, I was just, I just, and like a whole bunch of Donald Trump's kids, including Donald Trump himself, including his first wife, including his third wife, including, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I said, what in the world is going on? Now, um, what picture should I show? I'll just go back to here. I, 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 you know, have I lost my mind? Tell me. Please tell me whether or not I've completely gone, uh, oh, and let's not forget the Pope. He's also a Jesuit. My God. Okay. He, he still is. They just let us know in the Wikipedia article. Um, the the conspiracy theories, which I don't necessarily believe about this particular monastic order, are just out of this world. They're crazy. If I suggest, look them up. You'll find it. It's not hard to find. And many very prominent historical figures throughout time, at various, you know, the founding fathers of this country, the United States, most of them couldn't stand the Jesuits. Oh, I forgot one. Napoleon. Okay, he was he was educated by Jesuits. Um, again, I could go on and I could go on, and this I I know I've forgotten some, um, but the, like a lot of very prominent historical figures just could not stand them, couldn't stand them. Period, and me personally. Because I, I don't know, it's just maybe how I'm wired. But when I see everybody hates something, that's when I get interested. And I want to know why they hate them. I want to know if it's a justifiable reason. And I don't know whether or not... I don't, I don't, I don't think, as of, as of yet, I have not yet found a justifiable reason. Because the information is not easy to find if the, if it's if it exists it's not easy and i haven't found it you know why did like oh gosh like a bunch of the founding fathers couldn't stand them could not stand them why they never say why well they kind of they kind of say something but they never like get to the real like thing they never get to the real thing and explain like what it is that makes them so angry or whatever. And I want to know like what happened to this page, by the way. I don't, I, yeah, yeah, this, this is creeping me out. I could have sworn there was like a whole history of their formation and 
Oh. And I'm not going to look at the history now. I know I could do that, but no, I, I don't. I've, I've already been talking at you for 50 minutes. Now, this is what I wanted to discuss in this movie, my part three of understanding the exorcist, what the hell is going on. Um, I, you know, did I say anything? Did I say nothing? Did I spark your curiosity? Doesn't this, do, do, don't this sound suspicious to you? Let me know. I would love to know. I would love to know in the comments. Um, so I think I've said enough for one video. My goodness. Who knows if this thing is going to, uh, I don't know. I, I don't know. Like I said, I had that one interruption. Then I, you know, then I addressed Pazuzu and hopefully he, I think, I think he helped, helped me get through to the end of this video. So thank you, Pazuzu. Um, <laughs> Oh, golly. And I hope my neighbor, whoever it is, it's okay. I, I saw those, you know, the commotion, and I, I looked out the window, and there was a fire truck. Oh, my God. Way too much stuff. It's been a heck of a couple of weeks for me. I have been just up to my eyebrows in work, and I've been making these videos. I felt that I needed to kind of as a way to cope. Cope with with all the commotion that's going on in my own life, and so on and so forth. But anyway, you guys, l viewers, listeners, whoever you are, you wonderful people, thank you. That this is the point at the video where I want to say thank you for watching, thank you for listening, thank you for coming to my channel, and looking around, and hopefully listening to a little bit of my ramblings. I appreciate it so much. There, I've only got 17 subscribers, but you know what? That's a happy number, so I'm okay with it. Uh, if, you know, more of you, come on over. Come on over and subscribe. Uh, if you if you enjoyed this, please do uh, like, comment, subscribe and or share the video if you know somebody who might be interested in listening to this, seeing what I have to say about this, that, or the other. I don't know anything. I'm not an expert. I'm not a genius. I'm not, I'm not even really particularly smart. I just like thinking about stuff. I really do. Um, and I hope that, that, that I guess that's kind of my target audience. If I have one people who just like thinking about stuff and I use these, uh, particular subject matters like the exorcist like hunter biden's paintings like the monsters like you know the shining and whatever as vehicles and or vessels to just talk about these different ideas that i have or different questions that i have about stuff and i'm figuring that if you're look if you're re if you're sorry if you're watching these videos or listening to them that you might have a similar mindset to me so, you know, again, welcome and thank you for watching and or coming back to watch more. Um, I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate it if you do. So, with all that being said, I don't know what I'm going to do my next video on. I'm thinking that tomorrow or the day after tomorrow, I'm going to get to work on my Notre Dame video. Because I really want to put that one out on, on Good Monday, this coming Monday uh the during holy week where every day of the week is good um and i'm I'm gonna get to work on that tomorrow i got so much to say I'm not gonna talk about the jesuits though they they spooked me enough tonight no not him yeah that's this one loyola wow oh oh i just remembered a name you guys uh famous jesuits or no, not famous Jesuits, famous people who were educated by Jesuits. If you're into the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, Tom Girardi, Erica Jane, Erica Girardi, whatever her name is, the, her husband or ex-husband, whatever's going on, he went to Loyola, Uni I think he went to both Loyola University and Loyola Law School. And you know about, if you don't know about that scandal, oh, do look it up do look it up. I might even do a video on that. Because again, I love thinking about different stuff, different stuff. Anyway. Um, <laughs> so you guys, thank you once again. And uh, I will, you know, get to work on my Notre Dame video tomorrow. And subsequently, I will find a reason to talk at you 
for something, for some, some reason to talk at you in the future. But until then, once again, thank you, and I will go ahead at this point and bid you all bye-bye. So, bye-bye, everybody. <laughs>